Welcome into Original Gangsters Podcast, another quick hitter edition. This week on the pod, we're talking about the mafia in Connecticut. Um, you know, the five families have had a presence there for a while, specifically and particularly the Gambinos, the Genovese, and the Colombos. Uh, and I'm going to break down the top 15 mafia murders in the history of the state of Connecticut. Let's start at number 15. Billy Shemansky was a Gambino crime family associate that was shot dead uh, in a high speed, high speed chase with his killers on Merritt Parkway in Stratford, April 7th, 1980. Um, he was a thief, kind of an independent strong arm collecting for the Gambinos in Connecticut. Uh, the guy that killed him, who was another Gambino associate, ends up uh, in the trunk of his car um, at a, or I should say, behind the wheel of his car at a Howard Johnson's in Stamford, Connecticut, a couple weeks later. Number 14 is Eric Miller, uh, a boxer, mob enforcer, drug dealer. Um, he was killed, found shot in the back of his head behind the wheel of his Chevy Blazer um, on Ledyard Street, December 27th, 1988. Uh, his demise was triggered by a physical altercation that he got into with New England Mafia underboss Billy Grasso, who we'll talk about later. Um, but before Billy Grasso was killed, he had Eric Miller killed because Eric Miller swung at him and punched him out. Uh, it was outside of his restaurant, Franco's, uh, on Franklin Street uh, in Hartford. And uh, New Haven, sorry, not Harvard, New Haven. And uh, there was a... Uh, a verbal sparring match between Miller and one of Grasso's lieutenants, Jackie Johns. Uh, they were playfully joking. One was calling uh, the other an ethnic slur, and then an ethnic slur came back, Irish, Italian. Uh, they were just joking around. Grasso heard it, uh, heard the Italian ethnic slur, got very upset. He was out gardening out in front of the restaurant uh, and lunged at Eric Miller with a, a some like like gardening scissors and Miller punched him out. Uh, a couple months later, uh, Miller was killed. Uh, let's move on to uh, number 13, Tommy Pinocchio, Thomas Rispoli, a low level New Haven hoodlum that popped up dead uh, two weeks after getting into a physical altercation with Billy Grasso and Billy Grasso's uh, mentor, Whitey Tropiano. Again, another name we'll, we'll, we'll hear later in this list. Uh, this happened November 24th, 1962. Rispoli's naked and battered body was discovered in a Branford, Connecticut basement. His skull had been bashed in with a, a blunt object and he was shot three times. Um, let's move on. <laughs> Number 12, uh, May 18th, 1988, Billy Hot Dog Grant uh, is murdered. He owned the very popular Augie and Ray's hot dog and hamburger shop uh, in East Hartford, uh, he was somebody that was a big time bookie, uh, as Billy Grasso's power rose in the new England mafia. So did, uh, Billy Grant's and Grant was in charge of a, a safe house operation for the New York five families that he was running on behalf of the new England mob, where guys in the New York families that were uh, facing cases and wanted to go on the lam, uh, would hide out in, in Connecticut in places that, uh, Billy Grant owned. And one of the very powerful members of the New York mob that was hiding out there, uh, Alley Boy Persico, the brother of Carmine the Snake Persico, the Columbia Mafia boss, uh, was given up or it was believed that Billy Grant had given him up uh, and Billy Grant was killed for that. The belief is that Billy Grant was killed uh, in the parking lot of West Farms Mall in Farmington and then buried in a, in a nearby uh, residence or underneath a, a nearby residence. Number uh, 11, Salvatore Mickey the Face Corana disappeared in May 1987. He was a, a kind of an international man of mystery mob button, uh, one of Raymond Patriarca, the New England Mafia Don's kind of favored narcotics lieutenant. Uh, he was very cultured. He was somebody that was using computers to launder money and, and using 
computers to email people before anybody knew what email was. Uh, he uh, went on the run from a big drug case. He was hiding. When he was in hiding, he found out that his wife was sleeping with a friend of his and became obsessed with killing that friend. He got Billy Grasso's help. They went and they killed uh, a, a Boston hotel executive named Ted Burns, uh, buried him underneath the same residence that they most likely uh, buried Billy Grant in. Uh, let's move to number 10, Tommy Vistano. They called him Tommy the Blonde. He was uh, a Genovese crime family soldier who was shot to death in the backyard of his Stratford, Connecticut residence. He had uh, picked up his mentor, Midgey Annunziato, Annunziato uh, Salvatore Midgey Annunziato, who was uh, the Genovese capo there, uh, had picked him up at his home the day he vanished. He was considered a top suspect. Uh, in that case, he was also scheduled to testify at an upcoming grand jury probing illegal gambling in Bridgeport. Uh, let's move to number nine, Johnny Palmieri, November uh, 10th, 1974. They called him Johnny Slew, uh, a Gambino crime family, Connecticut lieutenant. He was blown up in a car bomb, um, in a bomb that was, or sorry, in a explosive device that was in his trunk uh, on Eastern Street in New Haven. He was a produce wholesaler, uh, explosive expert uh, for the mob, and he was in a turf battle with Billy Grasso. Uh, so, this was a couple months after Grasso had come home. He had met Raymond Patriarca in prison. They were cellmates. And when uh, Grasso came home, he was on a fast track uh, and kind of moving from some of the New York families to to, to uh, uh, New England. Eventually, he would kill his mentor. We'll get to that in a second. I don't know if I mentioned that Tommy Vistano's murder was January 28, 1980. That's who I talked to before. I uh, talked about before Johnny slew Johnny Palmieri, November 10, 1974. Uh, number eight. Richard Biondi, they called him Richie the Pistol. He was um, a top enforcer for Mid uh, Midgey Annunziato. He was killed inside his apartment in New Haven, uh, another casualty of a war that Annunziato uh, was fighting with a, a local Irish mob led by uh, Eddie Devlin. Biondi had threatened a group of Devlin's men in the morning uh, of December 23rd, 1968. And that evening they came by and they machine gunned him to death when he opened the front door of his house. Annunziato immediately had one of the Devlin gang members killed. Uh, number seven, Paolo, Paul the Greaser, Agresta, July 4th, 1974. He was a, a Gambino crime family, a drug and gambling lieutenant in Connecticut. Agresta uh, disappeared on his way to a July 4th Barbecue, he was one of uh, a Gambino uh, Lieutenant Frank Piccolo's main representatives in Canada. Uh, he was a, a native Italian, 68 when he died, did a lot of narcotics and gambling activity in the Bridgeford and Stanford area. He had reportedly been in a beef with Billy Grasso. Uh, number six is Frankie Piccolo. They called him Frankie Cigars or the attorney, he was the uh, the Gambino's capo in Connecticut, was gunned down outside his Bridgeport, or gunned down outside his Bridgeport headquarters, the Bagel Nosh, uh, in a phone booth, September 19th, 1981, uh, on Main Street in Bridgeport, 58-year-old, uh, was very industrious. He got on the bad side of then Gambino godfather, Paul Castellano, uh, Piccolo had gotten pretty ambitious and was uh, moving into Genovese territory, upsetting relations uh, with, with Castellano and the Genovese administration back then, mainly the Chin, Tony Salerno and whatnot. And uh, he, he was he was murdered. They called him the attorney because he was very argumentative and uh, always wanted to make his case, no matter whether he was right or wrong. It turned out to be wrong in 1981. Uh, number five. We're now in the in the final five top five murders in the history of the Connecticut underworld. Uh, Thomas DeBreezy, they call him Tommy the Enforcer, uh, was found in the trunk of his car February fourth, nineteen eighty eight. Uh, was one of the guys that was running Fairfield County for the Gambinos. Was found frozen stiff in his Cadillac in a shopping mall parking lot. He had fallen out of favor with John Gotti, who had killed Paul, Paul Castellano, as we know, took over. Uh, Gotti was calling for. DeBreezy to report to him, and uh, DeBreezy never did, and uh, Gotti would kill you for something like that, and he did when it came to Tommy DeBreezy. Number four, uh, Ralph Whitey Tropiano. He's gunned down 
um, in New York City in Brooklyn on April 30th, 1980. He was the Colombo crime family's capo in Connecticut. Um, Billy Grasso's mentor had been a part of Murder Incorporated back in the 30s and 40s, and he groomed Grasso, but uh, Grasso needed to remove him uh, to take over his rackets and then eventually transition into the patriarchal crime family. And he did that, it's, or it's allegedly he did that and was one of the people that arranged for uh, Tropiano's murder. It also came out in, in Tropiano's latter years that he had uh, debriefed with the FBI to get a prison term uh, for shaking trash uh, companies uh, cut down or shortened. Number three, Ralph Maley was really the, the first kind of big time gangster star uh, in uh, uh, Connecticut it was a real uh, mafia powerhouse. Uh, it was in a lot of the headlines in the in the 40s and 50s. Um, he was uh, a part of the Genovese crime family and based in New Haven, was found shot to death uh, on the side of the road in East Rock Park. He'd been out drinking with Midgey and Nunziato uh, and uh, they had been at a place called Lips Bar and Grill. A not, a Nunziato had killed Maley and then uh, taken over uh, his territory and became the capo of the Genovese in Connecticut for um, the next 30 years. Uh, and then we get to Midgey Annunziato's assassination. Uh, June 19th, 1979, uh, they called him Midgey because it was a, a, a play on midget because he was a small guy. Uh, he was in charge of the, of the rackets uh, for the Genovese crime family. From Genovese crime family disappeared from uh, East Haven after getting into a, a a car with his driver and bodyguard, Tommy the Blonde Vistano. He was supposed to be going to meet Billy Grasso. Annunziato was 59 and had been running uh, the Genovese affairs uh, since he killed Ralph Maley and took it over. Um, he's uh, alleged to have ordered the the, the robbery uh, stick-ups of some, some backdoor gambling dens that Billy Grasso was running. So that gets us to Billy Grasso, the number one mafia murder in the history of Connecticut, they called him the wild man or the wild guy because he was hair triggered, uh, a bit of a um, a rogue in some ways. He was also just maniacal and ruthless and very violence prone, uh, a guy that probably had two dozen or more bodies. Uh, he disappears, or I shouldn't say, he's kidnapped and murdered June 3rd, 1989, um, in the middle of a New England mafia war, he had become the underboss of the Patriarcha crime family underneath old man Patriarcha's son, Junior, his successor. Uh, and the guys in Boston did not want Junior as their boss. And they knew by killing Billy Grasso and attempting to kill uh, Cadillac Frank Salemi, they could remove Junior Patriarcha from, from the boss's chair. And that's what they did. And Billy Grasso was uh, uh, kidnapped uh, and told that he was going to a meeting in, in Worcester. Uh, but in reality, he was he was shot in the back of the head by some of his own guys in a van shortly after getting into it to go to the uh, go to the purported meeting. And they left him in Weathersfield uh, on, on the banks of the Connecticut River. That is the top 15 mafia murders in the history of Connecticut brought to you by the OG podcast. Please like subscribe and share. We'll be back with a longer form episode later this week for Benny behind the glass and for Jimmy, who will join us later this week. Scott Bernstein, OG pod out. Mm -hmm.